Hello, this is simply about networking protocols and today I'll tell you about OSPF LSAs, Link State Advertisements. Standard, uh, standard is the same, RFC 2328. In this video I'll tell you about OSPF stub and not so stubby areas, uh, what are router LSAs, network LSAs, summary LSAs and autonomous system, IS external LSAs, when they are generated and which information they are carrying. So, how you remember from previous OSPF videos, OSPF areas topology contains all devices uh, within our autonomous system and OSPF areas and networks those devices connected to and links uh, that uh, connecting those devices between. Those could be physical links or virtual links. Now to stop area. The simple, um, most simple definition of the stop area is area that doesn't have transit traffic. It means that all the traffic that is generated in the area and needs to go out was generated by devices within this area and all traffic that tries to get to the area is destined to the devices within this area. There is no transit uh, from one area through this purple area to another area. This is the simplest definition of the stop. So, why it is used? Because then devices within stop area should not know nothing about other areas and some conditions of the autonomous system. Because they have border router that takes care about all the routing of the traffic from this area to the outer world and devices within area should not contain all the OSPF tables, especially OSPF tables related to the uh, autonomous system borders um, and all, 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 all other things, so they don't have uh, to have so much memory, uh, so much uh, calculation power and so on and so forth, and they could concentrate only simply on routing. That's it. So, much more cheaper and simpler devices can be used within stop area. Except boundary device. Boundary device needs to be powerful. Again, as you remember about OSPF backbone area, backbone area contains of uh, area border routers and autonomous system border routers, and in some cases it could contain area internal routers because sometimes so uh, main condition of the big bone area is each device should has uh, should have a link to another device in the big bone uh, area right uh, sometimes it could be done using virtual links but in cases where virtual links for any reason cannot be used we just adding another internal router that uh, execute this function so it connects uh, multiple devices within the bone area. And now to most fancy thing in probably all the routing ever. Not so stubby area. Well, stub area, this is area that doesn't have transit traffic. Not so stubby area, could have some transit traffic, but not that much. And it could have, so it cannot have just one default router. Some, um, some conditions need to be measured before selecting where to route the traffic from not so stubby area. But we expect that not that much transit traffic will be there. For example, in this case, we have um, 
autonomous system border router uh, that is connected to another autonomous system but at some case we're expecting that all or most the traffic from this autonomous system will get to this area and not go further so we can call this area not so stubby uh, why i'll explain a little bit later when we go back to lsa's and now router lsa's ls type 1 uh, how you remember from the video about ospf hello this is it this is ls type 1 lsa so uh, hello packets are used to uh, by device to communicate to every uh, neighboring device trying to present itself and get the presentation about neighbors try to trying to figure out is it possible to exchange any information with those neighbors uh, can we uh, use them in our OSPF topology and so on and so forth. So this is uh, hello packets being generated by internal routers within area to every neighbor. They are not flooded. They are going to the neighbor. Those packets are being generated by autonomous system border routers to neighbors, including uh, neighbors by virtual links and they are generated by uh, um, area border routers and there how you remember from the OSPF flow video OSPF instance is generating hello packets within area uh, where those interfaces are connected so border router uh, operates in the state that piece of the router that is uh, belongs to some specific area talks only about itself about this piece not about all the device next type is network lsa it's ls type 2 again how you remember from ospf uh, hello at some point uh, devices that are connected to, to some network if there are multiple routers connected to the same network, they could elect a designated router and uh, backup designated. But designated right now will uh, will execute all the functions. So designated router will generate network LSAs, LS type 2, notifying all the devices in area about all the routers that are connected to this network. And this is done to avoid a horus when each router will notify everybody about it is connected to some network A. This information is going by single packet from single source uh, and avoiding some misunderstanding house and reducing control traffic uh, dramatically. Next type are summary LSAs of types 3 and 4. Summary LSAs are used to inform devices within area about external routes. So border area border routers generating summary LSAs uh, well per route per destination because destination is one of the most important thing in the routing at all final destination not the movie so border router generates summary lsa's to notify uh, all devices within area about possible routes too if they notify about routes to another routers or networks within some area those are ls type 3 if they notify about routes to autonomous system border route this ls type 4 the difference is ls type 3 running successfully in every area 
ls type 4 running in every area except stop border router of the stop network will not generate ls type 4 because it is default route for all external traffic and those devices should not take care about autonomous system at all next ls type 5 autonomous system external lsas uh, well uh, since this is called external some people could think that they go in external no they go in internal this is uh, traffic that is generated inside the autonomous system by autonomous system border routers to notify about possible external routes and those packets are being flooded through all the areas to all the devices except stop area once they reach uh, stop area border router they stopped and they have small specific working with not so stubby area with not so stubby area if uh, autonomous system border device is part of the area it will generate autonomous system external LSAs of type 7 and they will run in a not so stubby area when they reach not so stubby area border router they will be transmit to type 5 and will run as type 5 but external type 5 packets when they reach uh, not so stubby area border router stopped similar to how stub area behaves that's the one of the main differences between stub area and not so stubby area in stub area uh, external LSA is impossible in not so stubby area external LSA's uh, well possible but they are a little bit different that so simple thank you have a great day